Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement? There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that, mark my words, before your tenure is over. Can brain scans be used to determine whether a person is inclined toward criminality or violent behavior? You will rule on that. Here's a few words from Carl Sanders, the designer of the RFID chip. We began to investigate and find out where in the body does the temperature change the most rapidly. We spent over a million dollars in taxpayer money. And when the results came back, it was determined that there were two places in the body that were ideal for the microchip. One was just below the hairline on the forehead. The other place was the hand, the right hand preferred, because most people are right-handed. Then one day I came to Revelation 13, verse 16. And he causes us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. I didn't like what I saw. Now, on March 23, 2010, Obama officially signed his health care bill into law. Few seem to realize, but buried deep within the massive U.S. health care bill, in a non-discussed section titled Subtitle C11 Section 2521, National Medical Device Registry, it says, quote, the secretary shall establish a national medical device registry to facilitate analysis of post-market safety and outcomes data on each device that A, is or has been used in or on a patient, and B, is a class 3 device or a class 2 device that is implantable, unquote. In real world speak, according to this report, this new law, when fully implemented, provides the framework for making the United States the first nation in the world to require each and every one of its citizens to have implanted in them a radio frequency identification microchip for the purpose of controlling who is or isn't allowed medical care in their country. So far we can see that this man, Barack H. Obama, has fit the bill for the false prophet. Am I 100% sure? Absolutely not. But after examining all the available information regarding these unfolding current events, and of course thoroughly studying the prophetic utterances in the Bible, this is more than likely the scenario. What we do know is that the false prophet will be the leader of this country, whomever he may be, at the appearance of the next pope. Which brings me to Pietro Perolin. Pietro Perlin, born January 17, 1955 in Schiavon, Vincenza, is an Italian prelate of the Roman Catholic Church. He currently serves as the Holy See's representative in Venezuela since his appointment by Pope Benedict XVI on August 17, 2009. Previously, he had served from 2002 as Under Secretary for Relations with States after being appointed by John Paul II, or the Sixth King. The Under Secretary for Relations with States is the third highest position in the Vatican's diplomatic service. He has served the Roman Catholic Church as a diplomat for 20 years in Nigeria and Mexico and in Rome as County Director for Spain, Andorra, Italy, and San Marino. He speaks Italian, English, French, and Spanish, so we see that he is well versed and capable of seducing the world into following him. Now here we are going to take a look at an extra biblical prophecy, the prophecy of the popes, a list of 112 short phrases in Latin. There is another seer whose chilling predictions continue to echo down the centuries. He is Saint Malachi, canonized in 1190. Malachi was a reforming Catholic prelate born in Armagh in 1094. On a visit to Rome, he was struck by a vision. Before him appeared a series of Latin phrases identifying the 111 popes who would rule the Catholic Church until the end of time. He uttered 111 Latin mottos, which are supposed to represent the nature, the name, or destiny, or the coat of arms of every pope 
until Judgment Day. Many of the phrases are considered too precise to be the results of chance. John the 23rd, the 107th Pope in the prophecy, is referred to as Pastor et Nortam, priest and sailor. Before becoming Pope in 1958, he was the Patriarch of Venice. Paul VI is Flos Floram, flower among flowers. His coat of arms is a lily among lilies. John Paul II, who is called De Labor Solis in the prophecies, which means the sun's eclipse, the sun's labor. He is the only pontiff on the list that was born on an eclipse and later entombed during an eclipse. And the 111th, the final pope in the prophecy? The Gloria Olive, from the glory of the olive. That's the current Benedict XVI. At the end of the list, Malachi is said to have uttered a final doom-laden phrase, this one unnumbered. During the final persecution, the seat of the Holy Roman Church will be occupied by Peter the Roman, who will feed the sheep in many tribulations after which the seven-hilled city will be destroyed and the terrible judge will judge his people. The end. Currently, there is only one such candidate for Petrus Romanus, or Peter the Roman, within the Roman Curia. His name is Pietro Perlin. Now, you must understand, I would never even give these prophecies the time of day if it wasn't for one thing. They have come to pass. Regardless of whether or not these were inspired by God or fabricated and self-fulfilled by the Roman Catholic Church, one thing is for sure, the Bible states that the next pope is the last and that he will be destroyed, and this set of prophecies declares the same thing. So let's further investigate this man, Pietro Perlin. When the pope met with Muslim leaders on September 25th, Perlin was there. When the pope met with Israel's Prime Minister Ehud Omer December 13th, Perlin was there. When there were tensions in Vatican relations with Vietnam and North Korea, Perlin traveled to those countries on delicate diplomatic missions. In short, whether in Rome or abroad, Perlin has in recent years been one of the church's most tireless and effective diplomats and almost always out of the headlines. On April 30, 2009, the Israel Vatican Working Commission convened in Jerusalem for the first time headed by Deputy Foreign Minister Danny Allion. The meeting with the participation of Monsignor Pietro Perlin was held in a good atmosphere and both sides agreed to continue to work together. Significant progress was made in the talks and it was decided that the two deputy ministers would meet again on December 10, 2009 at the Vatican. It was also agreed that the working groups would continue to advance the economic agreement. Now the Bible says in Daniel 9.27 that the Antichrist shall confirm the covenant with many for one week or a seven year period of time. So he will confirm a treaty of peace. Has Perlin done this? Well, of course. Perlin has also been at the forefront of Vatican efforts to approve and implement the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Addressing the International Atomic Energy Agency on September 18, 2006, at its headquarters in Vienna, Austria, Monsignor Perlin referred to this treaty as the basis to pursue nuclear disarmament and an important element for further development of nuclear energy applications for peaceful purposes. The Bible says that the eighth king shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. Daniel 8.25 Perlin also said, since this treaty is the only multilateral legal instrument currently available, intending to bring about a nuclear weapons free world, it must not be allowed to be weakened. Humanity deserves no less than the full cooperation of all states in this important matter. The Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons is a treaty to limit the spread of nuclear weapons. There are 189 states party to the treaty, five of which are recognized as nuclear weapon states, the United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, France, and China. Only four countries on the globe are not part of this treaty as of yet, India, Pakistan, North Korea, and of course Israel. Now aren't those countries always pictured negatively in the news? It's because they haven't signed this treaty. Now the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty consists of three main ideas, one, non-proliferation, 
two, disarmament, and three, the right to peacefully use nuclear technology. Now the Bible again says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So if Perilin will be the eighth king and the Antichrist, and Obama is the false prophet, we would expect to see him behind this treaty as well, right? Well, he is. But it is clear to all concerned that when it comes to nuclear weapons, we have reached a decisive point. And any nation, including Iran, should have the right to access peaceful nuclear power if it complies with its responsibilities under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The G8 summit took place in Italy from July 8th to July 10th, 2009, where eight nations called upon all countries to sign the Non-Proliferation Treaty.